A lot of time people have trouble getting text to look good on top of a background image, so they throw a background color on there. They don't like how that looks and I don't blame them. This doesn't look so good. So then you come in with an opacity change to play with the opacity of the background, but it just washes things out. It can look okay, but it never looks fantastic. Well, there's better ways of doing things and we can do that with mixed blend mode. So instead of getting that washed out look, you can get this type of look instead, which I think looks pretty cool. Or you can even fancy it up, bring in some gradients, do other stuff like that and get some really interesting effects and things going on. Maybe not the perfect use case with this, but I'm sure you can come up with some awesome stuff along the way. So we're gonna be looking at how we can do this type of effect in this video. Hello my friend and friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel it's all about just falling in love with the wonders that are CSS and if not falling in love with it, at least being a little bit less frustrated with it along the way and we can do that sometimes by learning the foundation and the fundamental skills of it or other times we can do it by just finding ways to make things look better and that's a little bit of what this video is about. Now when I have looked at something similar to this in the past which was a background blend mode but in this video we're gonna be looking at mixed blend mode which instead of mixing multiple backgrounds on the same element we're taking different elements and blending them together you can get some really cool effects but you can also run into a lot of problems along the way with it and it's a little bit interesting in how it works so we're gonna start off by looking just a quick overview of some of the different groupings and general things with it and then we'll dive into uh, an actual use case for it like we saw at the beginning of the video with that we're gonna look at some of the issues that can come up with mixed blend mode and also how you can prevent those issues from getting in your way so let's go and dive into the code and take a look alrighty so let's jump into the CSS and get started and I am in CodePen right now, so the link to this one and the next one we're going to be working on are just down below. Now I'm not going to run through every possible mixed blend mode that's available, but one thing that's really important is the way things are organized in the DOM. So here I do have my mixed blend mode uh, div, which is, if we go and look, this is where this background image is, or it's actually, well, it's an image, but it's a texture or a pattern. Um, so I have that, so I, even here if I turn off the color, you can see that I still keep the background image. So we have a transparent image, then we have that. So that's my background. And then I have these divs in front of it that have a color on them. And this is where things get interesting. So here, if I go in mix blend mode, and the syntax is really simple, mix blend mode, and then you choose the mode that you want right there. And this one is multiply, and you can see that it's gotten rid of all the whites and it's keeping the darker pixels. You'll also notice that it's taking the text that's in here. This would even be, if we wrap that in a paragraph here, uh, I think I can just drag and drop it. So even if that's in a paragraph or not in a paragraph, it doesn't matter. It's everything that is in here is going to be um, affected by that blend mode. So the text is affected, the background's affected. And again, it's taking the darker of the available pixels. I'm, and these are like sort of the general groupings that I'm gonna run through because the next one is screen. So let's go down to screen. There we go, bump the other one out of the way. And we can open up my screen right here. And screen is the opposite. So multiply is going to pick the darker pixels screen is going to take the lighter pixels and use whichever ones are lighter uh, and it just boosts brightness in general. So you can see we get this type of effect. So if we compare multiply and screen, they're pretty much opposites. Uh, here the white text has disappeared. Here the white text has stayed. Um, we can see much more of the X and O's coming through on that one. So there's just two basic ones that we can look at. Overlay is the third one that you're gonna see a lot of uh, because what overlay does is it sort of plays with contrast. So while multiply is darker, Screen is dealing with white pixels more, keeping more of the white pixels. Overlay is dealing with neutral grays and it just in general boosts contrast. And then last but not least is sort of um, one of the stranger ones, which is difference. And we're gonna open up Photoshop in a second to understand difference. But what difference tries to do is illustrate where things are different. <laughs> um, so I think the easiest way, and this is, I always use this in Photoshop to make sure things were properly aligned. Uh, so here is me, I'm very happy here right now. Uh, and Photoshop or anything that has blending modes is always an easy thing to play with because you can sort of just go crazy and see how things blend together. So just really fast here, like this is all this grouping here is all the ones that deal with lighter pixels or it keeps the, the darker pixels. So the lighter pixels are being removed. So that white background is just disappearing. The opposite in this grouping, this is my contrast one. And then here's sort of the weird stuff down at the bottom. Um, but yeah, if I go in normal and I hit command J, so I have two of the same layer here. And I go over to difference, uh, where is it? You'll notice that we don't actually see anything because there is no difference between these two layers. But if I go and I move that layer a little bit, now what it's doing is it's highlighting the differences and it does it in a really creepy way <laughs> by basically inverting colors and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But you can see as soon as it gets there, boop, you can see it. If there's, so it's 
we use difference to highlight differences. And that might seem really weird here. Um, there, I looked at a really awesome use case uh, that was by Anna Tudor in a previous video, which I'd really recommend you check out. Um, it's a, just a really cool thing. You can see it on the screen now, but uh, yeah, I, I'll include the link to that pen down uh, below as well. And that's what inspired me to make this video. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper into it. So there's the basics of them and like the different ways that they generally work. Uh, so again, the overlay, the screen and multiply are probably the ones you'll find yourself using the most, but there are so many to choose from. I've linked the MDM link down below as well. Um, but you're here because you want to see how to use it on a layout instead of just some random example like that. So here's the layout that we're going to work on now. Again, this is in CodePen. It's linked down below if you want to play around with it. Um, and what I want to do is give this area a background. And the most common thing I see people do is they come in and they say background. Uh, and then of course we come in with our background color, you set it and you go, okay, that doesn't look terrible. And here the width is just 40%. I'm using Flexbox to stretch it You can dive into the code more. Uh, if you want to see how I made the layout. Um, but I set a background and I go, eh, you know, it doesn't look fantastic or you have text that's hard to read. So you need to put a background on it and then that doesn't quite work. Uh, so this is where we can come in with our mixed blend mode. You go, Kevin told me about mixed blend mode. I'm going to try mixed blend mode out and overlay looked cool when he did his demo. I'm going to try that. And whoa, what, what, I can't read my text now, or it's very hard to read my text now, or let's just try screen for fun and see what happens there. And oh my goodness, it's getting worse. And multiply would be better, <laughs> um, but still it's not going to be perfect because uh, the text is blending in with the background too. And this is one of the issues with it. So it does mean you have to set things up in a pretty specific way. Uh, often to be able to take advantage of this, especially if text is involved. If you do check out the, the, the one I mentioned from Anna Tudor, there she's using it in a creative way with text to pull off a cool effect. But uh, yeah, what I'm actually gonna do is remove these from here. Let's just copy this background color so we don't lose it. I'm gonna remove those from there and I'm gonna come down and we're gonna do my favorite thing in the world, which is a pseudo element and we'll use an after for it. Uh, if you don't know about pseudo elements, check out the link that's popping up or the card that's popping up up there. It's linked down in the description too. Um, I have a very in-depth video on pseudo elements because I love them and they're just, they're awesome. Um, so with that, I have content which you need on a pseudo element. I'm going to come here and do a position of relative, relative, because on my intro, I want to do a position of absolute and I don't want it to, I want to position it relative to my, my, and I want the, the containing block to be my hero intro right there. Um, so let's give it that background color so we can see it in a second. And then normally you do top, bottom, left, right. Now we can do an inset. Now on my video that I talked about inset, uh, which if you haven't seen it, it's a popping up there or in the description once again. Um, but the I, I looked at, when I showed it, people asked how often you set a zero to your top, bottom, left, or right. Or you could do all the same value. So it's, you know, you could do 1M. And again, you could, this is a shorthand. It's top, bottom, left, right shorthand. It's just like margins. You can do all four separately with, with different values as well. Um, but people ask me, like, how often are you setting all four with pseudo elements? Quite often I'm doing this. Now you'll go, Kevin, there's a problem. It's in front of everything. We need to move it backwards. You're right. So how can we do that? Well, we have a position. So with position, and actually let's just move this background here. I like keeping all my position stuff together. Uh, so we're going to throw a Z index on here of negative one, and we'll put the background back on. Um, but the problem is when I do the negative one Z index, what's happening is it's actually going behind the hero itself. It's going super far back. So there are a few different ways that we can solve this, but I'm going to do it um, by doing it on the hero itself and not on the hero intro. And I'll explain why uh, once we set up our blend modes and everything, but this could be an issue that you run into if you're using it. So yeah, I'm going to set it up here on the hero itself. What's really important here is I'm setting it up where the background image is. This is the key. So if it's an image or if it's two colors or a gradient in a color, you have to, if you do need to play with stacking contexts and the ordering of things, you want the one that has like the control of your stacking context to be the one with the background image here. And what I'm going to use is there's two different ways. I could do a po position of relative and then I could throw a Z index on there. So Z index of one, because what this is doing is it's creating a new stacking context. And by creating a new stacking context, when you have stacking contexts, the children inside can't escape that stacking context anymore. So the after here, it can't escape my hero and go behind it anymore. It's negative one, but it's negative one within that capsule. So this is creating a new stacking context. Now, if you do look up more on uh, mixed blend mode, another thing that you'll see a lot is isolation, isolate. And this is the same thing, but with one line of code. Uh, isolation isolate makes a new stacking context. So in this case, I'm going to use it here and it prevents my 
uh, pseudo element from escaping outside of the hero, which is exactly what I want. And now I can come in and do my mix blend mode. And I just want to compare it to one thing that I see a lot of people use this type of thing for. So maybe you have text on an image and it's hard to read it. So you throw a background on it and then it doesn't look great. So you play with the opacity. I see this all the time. It doesn't look terrible, but let's just compare that to if I do a mix blend mode and let's start with multi multiply and so don't you find, like look at the richness that comes out of that. And then if we turn off the multiply and we put the opacity back on, it just, the opacity just fades it out a little bit. Um, whereas with the multiply, I can keep those dark rich colors of like the dark green, the text becomes much easier to read. And I just love it so much more. And as you saw there, it didn't actually look bad when you combine the two of them together as well. Um, you get more of the text, you know, more of the actual image in, but you still get a little bit more happening here. So, you know, you can play around with the two of them and you can get a really nice looking design, but I am focused on readability. So I do think the darker the background, the better. Uh, that is why I chose multiply because multiply will get rid of lighter pixels. It keeps darker pixels. So because it's keeping my darker pixels, it's the perfect choice here. If I had dark text on a light background, maybe screen would be better because screen's going to keep the lighter pixels. It's going to wash things out. And then the dark text on top would be able to, to be much more readable and easier to see. You can run into issues in some things. It also really depends on the colors or gradients or whatever you're using and you're mixing together. So you do need to experiment a little bit. Uh, if you are placing text involved like we are here, overlay is a hard one to work with because it boosts contrast. So lights get lighter, darks get darker, and that means that it's you know, in the light areas, it's hard to work with, but overlay has really nice effects. You just be careful and just focus on making sure that things are still really easy to read. That should be the goal, but you want it to look good too, right? <laughs> so we can come in with the multiply right there. Um, now I did mention that I was putting my isolation isolate here on the hero. So just really quickly, the reason I did that and I didn't do it here where we have the position relative is if I did that, it means that this is my stacking context. And this would be the same if I did a Z index on the hero intro here. Um, because what that's doing is it's creating this, my hero intro is becoming its own stacking context. So its own living little bubble. And that means things can't escape outside of my hero intro. So this background has nothing, this, this green background now has nothing to blend with because it's not escaping out. It's not seeing the other things on the page. So that's why if you do need to use the isolation isolate or just create a stacking context, however you want to, um, you do it with the items that you want to, so like the base layer that you want to be blend, blending together with. So here I have my base layer that's setting that. And then I come with this here, creates the new stacking context and that prevents this from disappearing behind everything else. And it's all working out pretty nicely. And one interesting thing with mixed blend mode is there is another type of blending mode, which is background blend mode, where you can actually set multiple backgrounds on one element and blend them together as well. If you're interested in that, and you want to check it out. Here is the video where you can dive into that. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Zach and Randy, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.